Hi and welcome back, it's Paul Counsel from Money Mastery. And Money Mastery is really about giving people great strategies, great information so that they can achieve great results. And in this video series, I want to teach you how to build a blueprint for extraordinary achievement. How to actually build a, a feedback mechanism that allows you to get the future that you want. And you've got to think about at some point, after you've drawn a line in the sand, after you've drawn um, that, that sense that um, enough's enough, you've got to make a commitment to learning. And so that what, me sorry, what that means is that you've got to get access to new information. Now, when you get access to that information, you've now got to take the next step. And the next step is to put that information into action. Remember that often this is the point of breakdown for people. And when we put that, action, that information into action, then we start to get results. Now, in this model, it doesn't exactly matter what results that you're getting, because what matters the most is that you're starting to get a new result. And it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the one that you had your heart set on. What I'm really interested in is the fact that you now are getting a result on this journey of learning. Now, when we put that result, when we put it through our new feedback mechanism, then we can say, well, OK, how do we assess that? Well, it might tell us a few things. It might tell us that, hang on, we need to make some adjustments to the process. We might need to make adjustments to our knowledge base. We might need to make some adjustments to the strategies that we're using. But we've got to go through all five processes. And what that result, what that feedback mechanism will tell us, either we need to go back and get some more information so that we can apply that to the, the next series of steps that we need to take, or in fact, it might say, hang on, look, you're actually on the right path, you've got a result, it wasn't exactly the result you want, but everything is leading up to, so all we've got to do is just keep on doing that, uh, that action. And what we've got to do is just go through that process over and over again. It's, it's about repetition, repetition, either we're getting new information, we're making slight adjustments, and over time we start to realise what it is exactly that we want. So the greatest investment that you'll ever make is in your own personal learning and in your own personal financial development. Because if there's no personal growth today, there simply cannot be any financial abundance or any financial growth or any financial independence tomorrow. So remember that pretty much this is the old model that people use. We go from emotion to thought to history to belief, behaviours, get a result, get that feedback through the old reference points, and again, that's just going to lead to the same set of emotions, which is always going to be based on sameness, repetition, and less than. So now we've got to start developing a new model. Now, if economic and uh, financial freedom are important for you, if economic and personal freedom, now I've just got money up there, but you put up there whatever you want, whatever you want in your new outcome. So that will be your starting point. That's the absolute clarity. From that, we've got to now go through that thrive model. We've got to start to think it into existence. We've got to start to develop a whole new series of of habits, we've got to start off with role models, we've got to start off with integrity to our intention, we've got to validate the new me or the new you, and we've got to wrap that, wrap that up in a very, very fertile environment of learning, support, dedication, and decoding. Because when we do that, it allows us to overcome any of the barriers that we might be experiencing, whether they be psychological barriers or emotional barriers or physical barriers. We've, we, it allows us to get past all of those things. When we overcome our, our barriers, then we can start really tapping into our achievement genius. And when we tap into our achievement genius, we start to get a whole series of results that we never even dreamed about that were actually possible. And when you wrap that up into an environment of mentoring, and the reason why mentoring is so important is because they're the people that have got the results that you want, and then they can help you decode each of the steps on your journey. And so it's very, very important to work with a mentor because again, they can save you years and time in terms of having to go out there and discover all of these processes for yourself. Then when you start being mentored, you start to achieve extraordinary achievement as a physical manifestation or as a physical outcome, as a measurable outcome of all of those processes. And of course, when you're tapping into extraordinary achievement, then you're getting new senses of results. And the greatest thing about the new um, results that you're getting is that you develop a whole lot more influence. Remember I talked about self-efficacy, which is your beliefs and your capabilities about achieving the goals that you set for yourself. You are now able to influence whatever it is that you want. In this case, you can influence 
the amount of money that you're receiving. You can influence the amount of connectedness. You can influence the amount of or the new business because again, we're just coming at it from a completely different um, set of ideas and a different set of um, um, beliefs, a different set of a, a whole sort of different uh, model. What we experience as a result of that is this great notion of an exceptional sense of freedom because that's the point that you eventually get to. And one of the most important uh, messages that I um, learned on my journey was this um, observation by um, Viktor Frankl. And he said, look, a human being is a deciding being. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. And that really stuck with me. If I can't control or if I can't change the situation, then I've got to change me. And that's the thing that I experienced. I couldn't change the situation in my art world, so I decided to change me. And as a result of that, I now experience a great sense of economic and personal freedom. And again, that's the journey that I help people um, experience. Because it is all about exceptional levels of freedom. Again, it's about being anywhere that you want. Now, I'm going to give you this model. And uh, it's, it's a little bit... Uh, daunting at first but I don't want it to be daunting and it's only daunting because it's kind of new and it just approaches things from different uh, different perspectives and different angles and so if you want to go into this model further then there'll be lots of opportunities to do this and I'll, and I'll take you further and deeper into the learning but I'm just going to spell out the model um, for you so that you can get a sense of look, look and you can replay this video over and over again so that you start to do each of the steps so that you start to get a real handle on what's going on. So in this model, what we've got to do is become really crystal clear about where it is that we want to be. So we've got to think it into existence first. And so I've just got an example here where I would like to be in 12 months time or what I would like to experience or feel in 12 months time. And so that's our intention. And I've just got a label here that says intended destination. That's where we want to be in 12 months time. And so it's a statement of clarity and the, and the more clear we are, that's the target. Remember the, the archer and the target? That's our target. Now, relative to where we want to be in 12 months time, we're kind of sort of over here. We're just experiencing, I'm just gonna call it life conditions. So whatever, whatever conditions of life are for you, you're just experiencing those and this is where I want to travel to. So my intention is to move from this position to that position, and let's say I've got a time frame of 12 months. Now I need some activation energy. I need to then apply energy, authentic energy, in the direction I wish to travel. Now, if you're really, really stuck, then you might require some support in just you know, getting enough energy to start. But we've got to supply the energy, and we've got to have some sort of medium and I'm just talking about uh, economic and personal freedom. So I'm just talking about financial medium here. Now again, for you, what, you just insert whatever. We've got to have some mechanism. I've got to become skilled at something in order to allow me to achieve what it is that I want. So for you, it's the, you, it might be the medium of relationships. It might be the medium of investment. It might be the medium of, of health or nutrition or whatever it is. But we've got to have some sort of energy and some sort of medium in order to then um, get to the place that I want to get to. Now, as a result of that, we've got to think about, well, okay, what are my life conditions? Well, some of the life conditions, such as old habits and old um, belief systems, I'm going to call them liabilities. And what I would like you to do is list out all of the liabilities that you can think to yourself. You know, do I have old habits? Do I have a, um, a belief system that kind of sort of holds me back? Do I, do I you know, do I have... Uh, um, an old set of um, uh, conditions that just keep cropping up time and time again. Now, again, this will be specific to you, so I'm just going to indicate, um, let's just say a few. You might have fear of failure, and that's a big one for a lot of people. And so if fear of failure is working in your life, I'm just going to call it a liability relative to where you want to be, because fear of failure is always going to hold you back, and so that's pretty much a liability. You might have maybe a, a lack of confidence or, or a lack of belief that you can actually make the transition. You might not uh, have the support that you um, need, either the emotional support, the psychological support, the, you know, the, the um, support of the reference group. Um, 
the physical support. There might be a whole bunch of things. You might be living a lifestyle of regret and, and, and the regret might be too big for you to overcome. So again, I'm just going to call that liability. But again, you know, this list doesn't have to be your list. I want you to then, you know, start to identify, well, what are the things that are holding you back? It might be um, that you've experienced a whole lot of invalidation in your life or it might be that you're procrastinating all the time and you're not really moving forward. Now, that's only one half of your current life conditions. And I want you to list out those things. What do you think are the barriers or let's say the liabilities? But equally, you've got to start thinking about well, what are your assets? You know, because you, you do have this innate potential. You do have all of the possibilities. And so you've got to list them. You've got to identify well, what are the assets that will help you make that journey. So here are all the liabilities that are going to hold you back from that process. And you've got to list out the um, assets that will help you make the journey. So you might say, well, okay, I want to learn about how do I actually awaken my achievement genius? How do I tap into that? It's sitting there waiting for me to give instructions. I just don't know how to give it instructions. So how do I actually make that process? I might want to, uh, you might decide that I want to move into working with mastermind groups, or you might want to work with a mentor. You might want to do some um, uh, extraordinary achievement learning, a whole series of processes that will help you go there. You might want to work with mentors and coaches. Again, think about all of the assets that you have. If you've got um, your ability to uh, develop new skills, your enthusiasm, whatever it is that you want. So I want you to list a whole bunch of, of assets there. Now, here's the tricky part. Whether we've got a whole bunch of assets or a whole bunch of liabilities, what we end up doing is actually putting them through some sort of feedback mechanism. Now, remember that I referred to these models in a previous um, diagram as the default models, as a set of feedback criteria or a set of reference points. What happens is that most people have a subconscious, automatic, habitual, default feedback mechanism. The tricky part is to understand what criteria is sitting in your feedback mechanism. Now, just to give you an example, and again, we can do some more in-depth training on this, but just, I just want to introduce you to the concept first. You might have the notion of comfortable or uncomfortable in your default feedback mechanism. So if you're in your comfort zone and you step outside of your comfort zone and you suddenly feel uncomfortable, then the old message from your old feedback says, oh, hang on, it's scary out here. I better take another step back into safety where I feel safe and secure. The point about that is if you're working off default old habitual automatic feedback mechanism, they're not going to allow you to achieve. So anything that you've got in here, um, you know, the um, old habits or the, the fear of change or the fear of failure, or in, in fact, some people have got the fear of success. Um, if you think about those three mindsets, make money, spend money, borrow money, you know, they lock people into those ruts of sameness, into those models of predictability. And of course, if you stay there, then what you experience is contraction over time. You experience this notion of settled for, settling for less. And so over time, what you experience is the same results. And those same results might lead to a life of regret, that you didn't take the chances when you, hap when you happened upon them, that you, you didn't um, experience, that you weren't able to pass on to your children, that weren't able to spend more time with your children or pass on a better financial education. So what happens is that we start to live a life of confusion, we start to live a life of settling for less, of compromise, and we just get ourselves into the ruts of sameness and there is no change. So we've got to somehow move from this old automatic habitual default subconscious mechanism and we've got to be able to develop a new mechanism. Now, that new mechanism, we've got to start thinking about, well, okay, I need more assets into that new mechanism. So I've got to, I've got to put into this new mechanism a whole set of criteria that allows me to know whether I'm on track or off track according to the goals that I say or the goals that you say are important for you. And so you might put in there, look, yes, the development of my achievement genius. Yes, I am going to develop greater self-efficacy. And self-efficacy develops a little bit at a time where you, where you just do a little bit more than you're comfortable doing, not too much so that you're overstretched because if you tend to overstretch, 
the automatic default feedback mechanism will just have you back in your comfort zone. But just stretch one step at a time, just a little bit out of your comfort zone until you get all of that on board and then you become comfortable with that and then it's about taking another step forward. So it's a little bit, little bit, little bit, little step by step process that expands and expands and expands over time. So we've got to start thinking about um, accessing new reference groups. We've got to start thinking about, well, you know, here we might have right, wrong, good, bad. But here we might develop, uh, develop a set of criteria that says effective or ineffective. And when you start to develop language patterns like that, then you can start asking questions. Questions like, is this thought? Is this belief? Is this attitude? Is this opportunity? Is this decision? Is this behaviour? Is this behaviour effective or ineffective? Is this habit effective or ineffective? Is this belief effective or ineffective? Is this old idea effective or ineffective according to the new outcome that you want for yourself? And if you can say it's ineffective according to the new outcome I want for myself, then we can do the work necessarily to put that to rest so that I'm now only talking about doing effective actions, effective thoughts, effective uh, processes that will lead me to get to the outcomes that I say I want. Here is the most exciting part of the process. When you do this often enough, and when you really take this development of a new feedback mechanism seriously, a feedback mechanism that allows you to achieve extraordinary achievement, if you do this often again, often enough, what happens is this new feedback mechanism then becomes your automatic default mechanism because I've, you know, it's repetition, repetition, repetition. And so your brain starts to learn a new pattern and the new pattern goes into your subconscious mind and the action part of your subconscious mind now works on all of the things that you allow or that you want to do. And again, that's where you start to develop this uh, part of your brain that will actually do it for you. It, you know, high achievement or extraordinary achievement now becomes an automatic process. And again, when we do that, then we start to achieve expansion rather than contraction and rather than sameness, achievement then becomes our outcome and instead of the same results, we start to develop results that are based on more money, more choice, more freedom and a lifestyle of your dreams because that's again the expression of a new, more powerful achievement mechanism. And that's what we do at Money Mastery. We take individuals on a transformational journey that really unshackles their minds and allows people to master a new set of processes so that freedom and uh, wealth actually become measurable results for people. So achievement mechanisms really do, they allow you to make more money, they allow you to have more choice and experience more freedom in your life and you can develop a subconscious feedback mechanism that allows you to do most of the work automatically and again that's where our dreams and extraordinary achievement really become tangible expressions of that. And when you think about the whole notion of thrive, again, when you provide the right conditions, any living organism will actually thrive. And Mahama Gandhi, he had, look, if I have a belief that I can do it, and again, that thinking it into existence first, if I have a belief that I can do it, I shall surely acquire the capacity to do it even if I don't have that capacity in the beginning. And again, that whole business, I'll surely acquire the capacity, really comes to those people who believe in themselves enough to thrive on new knowledge, to authentically begin the journey of change, to go after, to, new, to use new reference points. How will you feel when you're actually getting the outcome that you want? How do you feel when you build self-efficacy? Because when you build self-efficacy, you build in levels of confidence that allow you to achieve all of the independence that you've ever wanted. So it's a, it's a decision-making process. And so for you, you've got to start thinking about, well, look, we don't actually have to know the whole journey before we begin. Now, some people try and know all that, but for some people, it's just unknowable. But what you all know is what's the first step for you? Is the first step just drawing a line in the sand and saying, look, that's enough, enough is enough. Is the first step for you just reaching out to some more learning? Is the first step for you finding somebody who's got the lifestyle that you want and so now you're going to get into their energy orbit. But the first step is the most critically important step and it requires taking action 
on that process. Now in the next series of videos, I'm going to, to unpack the Thrive model in a little bit more detail to show you how um, it really impacts on a master plan for moving forward. It really is a master plan for extraordinary achievement and it's pretty much a step-by-step -step process for getting more of what you want, especially if economic and personal freedom are important for you. So until then, it's bye from me and I'll see you in the next video.